Welcome to Awareness and Transformation, episode six. Unbelievably, right? Unbelievably. My name is Ryan Wallace. My name is Ralph Lowe. And we serve together on the staff of Pittsburgh Presbytery. And Ralph, sports are back. I know, I'm, I'm very excited. Oh. Uh, it's, it's been a, a little while now. Baseball started it off, and then yeah. we had hockey, uh, and then hockey. the NBA. So the it's, it's been a while. So We're I'm getting excited. ready for the NFL? Yes, the NFL in two weeks. A couple weeks, yeah. Yep, two weeks. Yep. Um, excited, you know, hockey playoff games, all, all those things. It was very exciting, very exciting. Yeah. But last week we had, uh, unfortunately, another shooting of a, of a black man. We did. And it was interesting to me that that touched off protests yeah. and mini strikes. Yeah. But what was most interesting to me, because the sport that I follow the closest is hockey. Always have followed hockey, grew up playing hockey. Um, where I grew up, we didn't even have an NBA team. But it was interesting to me that we saw protests in hockey, mm -hmm. the WNBA, which I believe actually was first. I believe that WNBA was first. NBA, Major League Baseball, mm -hmm. and the NFL. Yeah, yeah. So five, five of the major sports mm -hmm. all either had protests or mini strikes mm -hmm. in reaction to this. Yeah, and I, and I think as you and I talked about it, we wondered if it wouldn't be important to kind of settle in on where does sports fit into the narrative of protests and um, the attention given to uh, the approach or the, the oppression of people of color in this country. And I think today we kind of settled on talking about Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick. And I know just saying it out loud, there's a range of emotions that many of you will feel. Uh, I just want to add that you know, these are mine and Brian's opinions, and, and that's why we're here. Yeah. Uh, we learn yeah. from each other, yeah. and hopefully you, 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 you learn from us and, and go on and do your kind of own education on how you truly feel and kind of vet that out as Christians. So, but understanding that, we wanted to give a, an accurate background to this start of the thing that was Colin Kaepernick and kneeling. Uh, and Brian, you, you wanted to yeah. kind of give us the background and what led into him yeah. kneeling. Yeah. So I think it's important that we kind of go back and get the facts straight because Colin Kaepernick's been turned into memes and a hero and a villain. And I don't think, unless you back up and go and see how the whole thing developed, that we can really understand kind of how this whole like protest movement started. It's also worth noting that Colin Kaepernick is the one who's given credit for kind of launching this protest movement of protesting during the national anthem. If you look on Wikipedia, which we all know is the source of all truth, <laughs> um, what you'll find is that there's actually an entire article on anthem protests, and it begins in 2016. And during the third preseason game of, of the NFL season that year, Colin Kaepernick, who was a quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers, remained seated during the national anthem. And after that game, he, there was a lot of feedback, a lot of blowback. And what's interesting about it is that some of the feedback came from a guy by the name of Nate Boyer. Nate Boyer, I believe at that point he was actually a no longer active duty serviceman. He was, I don't think he was. But he was a military veteran. Yeah. And he actually reached out to Colin Kaepernick and addressed that action of sitting during the anthem as being received or being or coming across as being disrespectful to those who are serving or had served in the military. Can I say something real quick, Brian? It, it is so so we're clear the the news came to uh, Mr. Um, uh, Hoyer and said, hey we'd like to do an article about you know Colin Kaepernick sitting down. Would you be willing to go on the record and stating your opinion? And what he agreed to do was an open letter directed directly to Colin Kaepernick because he understood why Kaepernick was, was sitting. He just didn't believe he should be sitting. And he didn't feel like his words would be expressed in any other way by his own through an open letter. Yes. That's important. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah. it's a very important detail. Yeah. So at the fourth preseason game, Colin Kaepernick knelt during the anthem one of his teammates now during the anthem, and Nate Boyer was Kaepernick's invited guest. And what's important to know is Boyer stood. So Boyer stood, Kaepernick kneeled, I think it was Reed, his teammate, yes. who kneeled was, yeah. as well. Yep. And out of that, of course, launched this kind of anthem protest movement that we've seen since then. Yes. And some of the fallout. Yes. And all that has happened. Yes. 
And I'm curious, Ralph, what, back up to 2016 and even to now, mm -hmm. what was your reaction? So my initial reaction was excitement. Uh, I felt and invigorated by um, what, Kaepernick, what, what Kaepernick decided to do because on a stage as big as the NFL, uh, for the attention to be set upon the oppression of people of color in this way, uh, invited conversation. And I felt at the time, as I still do today, that it was an opportunity just, just in the kneeling to progress an opportunity for the conversation, which is very important. As Brian and I have talked about through these six episodes, through these five episodes that we've done so far. Uh, I will say, however, I have many family members who are in the military, black family members who are in the military, who didn't agree with my assessment of the situation. So we've had many conversations since then. I will add that they have, many of them have kind of evolved over the years, and I'm gonna use that word, that's my word, evolved over the years. So today we've come together and talk about it and think about how far we've come from when Kaepernick was vilified doing a peaceful protest and juxtapose that to today yeah. when we think about peaceful protests. And it, it is amazing to me how that has just changed over the years, Brian. But just to specifically answer the question you posed to me, I was excited about it. I mm -hmm. thought it was uh, a, a clear uh, opportunity uh, for a, a black man to, to show his frustrations, what was going on in the world at the time, uh, in a way that was peaceful, but also drew attention so that everyone could join in the conversation. I think one thing I didn't mention that I should have is that uh, after the, after the first time Kaepernick sat, he actually, in his comments to the media, made it very clear what he was protesting. He was specifically trying to raise awareness about, um, about, police, about the issue of police brutality. So he actually named that at the outset, that that, that, that was what he was trying to raise awareness about. Um, I, think, I, think my, I think my reaction was, was a little bit different. One, it, yeah. it was 2016. Um, I was not, um, I was not aware, I was not as aware of some of the underlying issues that relate to race in 2016. I think for me, the sitting didn't sit right with me. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, the kneeling did. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like, and it was just me personally. Sure. And it's time just, just kind of, of like watching it and reflecting on it. Um, I think for me, it was like it—it it really hit home. Not Kaepernick, but how far we've come. This August, when the when the first NHL game back, mm -hmm. Matthew Dumba of the Minnesota Wild, mm -hmm. on behalf of the NHL Diversity Commission, mm -hmm. was asked by the league mm -hmm. to make a statement. The first game back to publicly address the crowd. Of course, there wasn't a crowd, but to right. publicly address the NHL audience and bring this up. Yeah. And of course, there are less than 30 African-American players in the whole of the NHL. That's right. um, so, so to me, it was interesting to reflect back on 2016, yeah. to realize that in 2016 we had this, and now here we are four years later, and we're seeing it across the board yeah. in different sports. Yeah. So I think today though, Brian, what's important, I think the opportunity we have today is just to talk about, express our feelings and emotions at the time as we've, as we've done, and also to talk about what are we called, how are we called yeah. to approach this as Christians? Yeah. Yeah. How are we called to even broach this passionate conversation when it comes to kneeling during the anthem? And I just, I want, I want to be clear that we know those of you who are listening have some passionate views about a Kaepernick kneeling, and, and anyone who would kneel mm -hmm. during the anthem. We, Brian and I just simply ask you just listen to this with an open heart and open mind. Uh, allow us to express what we feel is an opportunity as Christians to move, a, move, ha move ahead in awareness and hopefully through God be transformed in a way that allows for these conversations to happen. We're not asking for you to move yourself into a position 
where uh, of division or or we understand that's you want to be in a place where you just mm -hmm. don't think you should be kneeling. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or or can't imagine how you don't kneel. Or can't imagine how you don't kneel. Don't kneel. That's right. We I understand that. I do. I think for Brian and I and for this conversation we're about to have, we'd love for you to be able to have an image in your heart of Kaepernick and, and the gentleman, the Marine, mm -hmm. who came alongside him, where they both together kneeled and stood up. Mm -hmm. Both of them reflecting yeah. this country in the way that yeah. they felt necessary. Yeah. Okay. Um, that being said, Brian, I think if we're really going to talk about this and be personal about it, we have to talk about the reasons why people feel like it's inappropriate yeah. to kneel. To kneel. Okay. Well, the one I've heard the most, I think, is it's disrespectful mm -hmm. to our fallen heroes in mm -hmm. the military. Uh, disrespect to the flag, disrespect to, the, to those who are serving. Um, can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's talk about that a little bit because uh, I, I know, I'll just go back to the, um, to my family members who were uh, in the military. That was how they felt. And my, my cousin felt that way uh, strongly. And as we talked over the years and talked about why Kaepernick did it and the, 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 uh, how people of color, in, in my opinion and in his opinion as well, have been, have been treated over these past four years, uh, specifically since Kaepernick first knelt, he, he has came along in his mm -hmm. understanding mm -hmm. because, as I said earlier, it was an opportunity to respond to what was going on in our nation when it came to specifically black men uh, who were victims of police brutality. And what better way, in my opinion, to do that peacefully through a showing of, in my opinion, respect in kneeling, but also attention because it's something different mm -hmm. than standing, because that's what we normally do, standing mm -hmm. with our, our hand over our heart. Um, in a way that promotes conversation. I know some of you listening to that will disagree with that vehemently. Mm -hmm. I, I respect you for that and I love you for that and I appreciate that. But I, I, I would have to disagree with that, Brian. What, what would you? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, I, uh, my own background would say that, that you stand, right? Like you stand for the national anthem. It's a way of showing respect. I think for me, if I'm completely honest, like I have a lot of like, like, I love the United States, but because of my, like, training in theology, like, I'm really, really, really uncomfortable when, when we try and mix, like, faith and nationalism. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of it just comes out of, like, like, some of my big theological heroes have been, like, Dietrich Bonhoeffer and Karl Barth. So both of whom were directly impacted by Nazism mm -hmm. and like the German Christians. So when it comes to talk about nationalism, like I'm not the best one to talk to. Yeah. Because long before 2016, like we're talking like 2005 to 2006, like just, just having huge reservations about like that, that a mix of patriotism and Christianity. Yeah. Um, it just, it's always made me uncomfortable. It predates, it predates everything that we're talking about. It was just something that just made me uncomfortable. Um, and yet, at the same time, like, my dad's a Vietnam vet, mm -hmm. two tours. My father-in-law is a Vietnam vet. Um, my father-in-law especially is like a passionate veteran. Um, you know, has always been, a, like, that's been a huge part of his community. And so I get it on the one hand. Like, like if, if kneeling comes across as like an, a personal affront, right, for people, some of whom, many of whom, put their lives at risk in service to our country, right? And I think one of the things that I need to say is like, like I'm a pacifist at heart, mm -hmm. but I'm a pragmatic just war guy in reality, mm -hmm. right? Like I, I, like I believe strongly in war is always wrong, mm -hmm. but I also believe sometimes war is, the war, is, the, is the, a list on so, a whole bunch of bad options, that's right? right. So, right. so I'm not a true pacifist yeah. um, in that, but, but I understand and I appreciate women and men who have done what people who have served in the military have done, mm -hmm. many of whom have risked their lives, who have paid the price, 
Um, you know, I have cousins who are in the reserves right now. I mean, so like, like I take that seriously when someone says it is a personal affront to me, mm -hmm. regardless of how it's intended, mm -hmm. the impact it has on me is this. Sure. And I think that that's, that's a viewpoint that while I struggle with it a little bit, I'm like, come on, that's not how they meant it. Mm -hmm. You and I have talked a lot in these first six episodes when it comes to race, yeah. what we meant right. and the effect it had, yeah. like, the effect still matters. I think so I have matters. to take it seriously yeah. from, from those who have served and who have lost loved ones, yeah. who say no matter how he intended it, this is still how it's received. For me, the struggle is, but he changed his behavior, yeah. right? When he was called on it, mm -hmm. he changed his behavior mm -hmm. to something that still protested. Now the question, obviously Boyer in that situation didn't think that was the appropriate way to protest. He yeah. stood. Yeah. But there's a point of mutual forbearance there. And that's where I think that's what's helpful in this yeah, conversation. I, I think so. I do. Um, I, I, but I, I want to push back a little bit, Brian, because often the, the uncomfortability when someone of color does something that is not the norm yeah. in society yeah. is, is, is um, unfortunately, see, because it's a person of color, seen as... You, you're not acting the right way, yeah. you're not doing the right yeah. way, as opposed to if it was a, per, a white person who'd yeah. done this. You know, I think, and this is a small point that could lead us down a tangent that we don't need to go, but if it was a white person that had done this, it, we would not be, in my opinion, we would, be not, we would not be sitting here having this conversation. I think you're right. Okay, so I don't, while I, you know, earlier I said I, I disagree with the sentiment of it being disrespectful, I recognize that some of you do think it is. Yeah. Um, and, and grace and love, I, I, I appreciate that sentiment. But I want you to understand my disagreement, it, the underlying part of that is that I understand that it was a man of color who did this. And that plays into the decision to dismiss it and to acknowledge it as a disrespectful act. And unfortunately, if that's hard for you to hear that, then I, I understand, but it's truth in my opinion. Yeah. It's truth in my opinion. Yeah. So, and so go ahead, you were, you were. And I think it's also worth like backing up. Um, again, 1968, Mexico City, 200 meter dash, mm -hmm. Carlos and Smith, I can't remember who is who, but like they, if you don't know, drew a lot drew of headlines yep. because they put on one black glove and raised a fist mm -hmm. on the metal stand. Yes. And a huge blowback, which was, oh, was huge, was, right? You know, no, huge. Please, if you do not know what Brian's talking about, yeah. please I'll put a link to it. educate yourself. In the Brian will link to yep. it. It is important. It's this in, is why yeah. we're here. Yeah. So please link to it. Yeah. But blowback, listen, this is the blowback we, you've, and I just, I'm sorry. So no, the no. blowback was from the federal government. Yes. This, this blowback was, it was intense. They were going to be labeled, um, and God, I'm so glad you, you brought that up. They were going to be labeled as, you know, uh, you know un-American, as yeah. they said about Colin Kaepernick. Some of the same things, actually, as they said about Colin Kaepernick. And it was, it was, they were going to take their medals away and, 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 all, and all those things, yeah. right? And wow, uh, you yeah. just brought back a many emotions yeah. for me that I hadn't planned yeah. on. So, yeah. So we could go on and on talking about this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we're acknowledging like this is a tricky kind of dicey is. issue to get around. Yes. But one of the things that oftentimes happens when someone protests yeah. like this in a way that someone finds distasteful, yeah. disrespectful, etc., is they bring up what about? Yes. Yes. What about? So what about, you know, those who fought, fought and yeah. died for this country? What about those who are in service right now? What yeah. about you know, all, all those things that we all do, we all do the whatabouts, right? We, Brian and I joked uh, earlier today, actually, about what, the whatabouts in marriage, which, which is, you know, I, I see that my, my wife comes to me and says, you know, I like where the couch is sitting right here. And what I'll say, and, and I'll come there and say, well, honey, the house is on fire. <laughs> So, so it's great. Let's worry about the couch you, later. Let's worry about the couch yeah. later, and let's yeah. worry about yeah. the house. Yeah. Uh, so, so the what about, while some are valid, yeah, right. I will acknowledge that. 
Some are labeled as, in, in my opinion, and I think Brian would agree with this, is redirecting, mm -hmm. okay? So w give me an example of. Sure, so, so people will often say, in relation to Colin Kaepernick or whatever, they will say something like, well, actually I just thought, I, I thought of two. One is, well Colin Kaepernick's not oppressed, he makes millions of dollars a year, that's one. And number two is, well what about, Black on black crime. That's right. 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 What about, and so, and like Ralph told me I can't like make this the whole focus of the episode, but it's too late, I, I, I control. <laughs> like, I just want to agree and affirm what Ralph said. Like, so often the whatabouts that come up are ways of deflecting and redirecting out of a conversation we find to be uncomfortable. Yeah. So it, 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 if the instant that you hear about like police brutality protests, which is what these are, your first reaction is, yeah, well, what about why? Because the mentality I think we should have is, hey, the house is on fire, not the couch is in the wrong space. I hope, I hope we can hear that yeah. in, in love and faith, yeah. right? Because two things actually can be a problem, yes. right? Like crime is a problem. Yes. And police brutality is a problem, yes. right? They are both problems. Yes. So to say, well, what about this instead of this, trying to redirect and deflect, I don't think is necessarily the most helpful. It isn't. Way and to approach things. But it's so, it's so alluring for us when it, we get uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I think more importantly, Brian, though, it, is it a, that's not, in my opinion, a Christian response to, 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 to this problem? I, I, I don't think so. I mean, it is an opportunity <laughs> yeah. for us to, to look within ourselves. And if we are redirecting in a way that is not healthy and not acknowledging the house, is on fire, the house that is on fire, uh, we need to examine that and, and find yeah. ways to, to, to look into why, first, as Brian said just a minute ago, why we're not able to do that. Why, why can't we move away from redirecting, move away from the whatabouts, yeah. and into the, uh, the opportunity to say, okay, you know, I'll just give a quick example. I hear a lot of people say, I heard a lot of people say when it came to the Kaepernick in kneeling, the first thing you said was, well, he has millions of dollars, he has no idea. Yeah. He has no yeah. idea. Yeah. He, no. yeah, he's impressed. So I'm gonna share with you that, and I think we've talked about this in, in some early episodes, that you know, I'm a middle class, I have a middle class family, right? My wife is white, my, my four boys are, are, are considered to be black. I'm gonna tell you that we, we, are, we are comfortable where we are, okay? My experience ends of being comfortable in my house the minute I walk out the door. Because I, when I walk out the door, I am a black man, okay? Now Kaepernick, you're right, everyone knew his name, they knew he was the quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers, that's all true. I am telling you, Kaepernick in some spaces is, was still, is still a man of color and was treated as such. So for us to have a notion that his experiences aren't the same as those experiences as those men and women who were shot and killed through pr police brutality and dismissing that experience, that's not a Christian response. Mm -hmm. If we're living into understanding that the house is on fire, we're asking the question, wow, why is Kaepernick doing this? Mm -hmm. I believe. I may, not be I may not like his methods, but I really need to look into yeah. why he's doing yep. it. And I think you just, like, you just made the point that I really hope, particularly our white audience hears, is you can disagree with the method of protest. You can say, no, the anthem's not the right time. You shouldn't kneel, I refuse to kneel. That's okay, right? And you can look at what, at what is going on with like peaceful protests mm. that devolve into riots. And I've heard a million people say, like, like, well, I don't mind people protesting, but rioting is wrong, yeah. right? And I want to be very clear. I think rioting and violence is wrong. Yeah. But the problem is that when, again, you are more upset about the rioting and the violence than the underlying cause of why we got there, yeah. that, like, that's what I want our white audience to really hear. Is like, you, can, you can rightfully disagree yes. with kneeling. Yeah. You can rightfully say, look, like violence is wrong. Like you shouldn't be rioting, all this kind of stuff. Um, like you can say all that and that's fine. But if that's where you stop, if you say, well, I don't agree with the methods and you run away from the underlying causes, 
Like that to me is where it breaks down. Yeah. And, 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 and to kind of tie this into like the Christian response, one of the things that, that, that we've developed within the church in the history of the church, and it dates way back to Paul, is this idea of having mutual forbearance, mm -hmm. right? So, so in, in, in the New Testament, Paul is dealing with the issue of meat sacrificed to idols, yes. right? And was this something that you should eat or you shouldn't eat, yeah. right? Yeah. And some people felt very strongly that you shouldn't eat it. Some people feel like it's really strongly that it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. And I think, strangely enough, like I have come up with this phrase that I've used where I've said, well, that's, that's meat sacrificed to idols, mm -hmm. right? It's a meat sacrificed to idols issue of where there is a personal preference. Mm -hmm. But we're taught, we're told in Scripture to exercise mutual forbearance to one another, even if we don't agree with, in principle, what they're doing. So, I don't know about you, I have family members who are Christian who do not consume alcohol. Mm -hmm. They don't. Mm -hmm. And for them, it is part of their Christian conviction mm -hmm. that they don't consume alcohol. Mm -hmm. You and I also have friends who are ordained pastors who brew beer. Yes. <laughs> yes, we do. Right? Yes, we do. And yet, this is an issue where we talk about how important mutual forbearance is, right? I have friends who are recovering alcoholics. I do not order a drink. Mm -hmm. I do not offer them a drink. I do not drink in my own house, mm -hmm. even when they're there. Yeah. Even though it is permissible, yeah. it is not the forbearing things, thing to do. So, I do want to say, and, and, and I, I agree with everything you said, Brian. I, I do want to say, though, the 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 opportunity to educate ourselves and to understand our Christian response to this is, is there, and you've articulated that well, and I appreciate that uh, for, our, for specific our, our, our wide audience. But how do I get there, Brian? Not me specifically, yeah. but if I'm listening to this as a member of a congregation, a predominantly white congregation who, who is listening and kind of understands what you're saying, what, what first steps? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give one and then m and maybe you can yeah. piggyback on that, right? Um, I think if, you're, if, you're, if the opportunity presents itself for a great conversation with someone you trust and love who feels differently about kneeling, mm -hmm. protests, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, I, I would encourage you to have those conversations in, in love and grace because the only way for, for seeds of not only change, but transformation through God is through those conversations where the mm -hmm. Spirit leads both of you or a group of you into a place where division is not welcome. We can have difference of opinions about a topic, but division is not welcome. Um, and then I guess another, another thing you could do, a practical takeaway, I think, from this is don't shy away from having these conversations. Don't shy away from speaking out, speaking up in a way that says, you know, I, I'm a Christian. I, I believe in, you know, treating people equally. I believe that I've done that in my life. I believe that I've taught that to my kids or my family members. And I strongly disagree with what Brian and Ralph said today. So if that's the case, please, Talk about it. Talk about it in your circles. Talk about it with people, again, people that don't agree with you. Because as I said early on, what Colin Kaepernick gave us in his is an opportunity to have these conversations. What we do with it, our response to it, is, shows our Christian value mm -hmm. and, and how we move forward from that. I hope I articulated that right. But it, yeah. is, it is important it for us to have that yeah. conversation. I think for me, one of the things that I would, would, would always say is like, learn to ask the why question, right? Why, like, like if you get so turned off by the method that you're not even willing to look beyond, beyond it, I think it's really important that you begin to say, okay, why are they protesting, right? And if, if you don't agree with the way they're doing it, okay, fine, don't agree. But, but that's not an excuse, I don't think, as a citizen of this country, to just simply dismiss it out of hand and say, well, look, I, I mean, I disagree with it and it's wrong and therefore the whole cause is wrong. Yeah. You know, you and I in our last episode talked about how we both support some of the principles behind defunding the police. Yes. Well, disagreeing yes. with language and some of the 
correct. In, in the direction that some people take it, yes. right? Yes. There's a difference, like you can be nuanced in this world, believe it or not, yeah. right? Like you can be nuanced and be able to say, I don't agree with kneeling. Yeah. And I don't agree with rioting. Yes. But it doesn't mean there's not a problem. Yes. Right? It doesn't mean police, police, uh, police brutality is not a problem. And like, I really cannot believe in the space of six episodes, we've, uh, I, I, I shouldn't say that. It's upsetting to realize that six episodes ago, we started this with George Floyd. Mm -hmm. We're two months later, and we have another one, national profile mm -hmm. on video, yeah. right? And like, if you're still sitting at home, and if you're still listening, which at this point, you're probably not, because you turned this off a long time ago, <laughs> But if you're still saying, I don't see the problem, I would just ask you to go and watch the video. Yeah. Go and watch the video. Watch it from start to finish. Watch it, watch both angles. One where they've got him on, on, on the ground and he gets up and walks away. Yes, he walked away from a cop. That's true. The video shows it. But he also got shot in the back getting into a car. And like, like you need, you need as a white person to realize that we can watch these things and be like, oh man, he sh you need to listen to a cop. Yeah. Uh, okay, yes, there's a principle there that I understand and that I resonate with, but the fact is, he got shot in the back, and as Ralph pointed out to me today, well, the cop had a hold of his shirt. Yeah. And like, I can't watch those things anymore and not be like, there's Ralph. Yeah. There's Ralph. Yeah, and what I think about is there's my four boys. Yeah. That, that's what I think about. Yeah. Um, so, excuse me, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so, I, I, I just want to piggyback a little bit on, on, on what you said, what you just said, because I, I love how you correlated the police brutality uh, into the, the actual reason why Kaepernick knelt. Because if the, you know, for me, again, I, I shared earlier what my viewpoints on the kneeling was, but for, for me, the the peaceful the peaceful opportunity mm -hmm. that 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 um, Kaepernick presented by kneeling uh, is is something that I think it, especially during this time where yeah. the 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 headline in the news day in and day out is the rioting of the protests mm -hmm. and not the protests itself. Unfortunately, uh, I have been to five, maybe six different protests over the past three months, none of which have ended in any violence. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that is, that is not make headlines, unfortunately. So that's why I get a little emotional when there is a peaceful representation mm -hmm. of a, a peaceful acknowledgement of the of police brutality or the oppression of people of color and we, and we still have this vitriol mm -hmm. for this peaceful demonstration. Yeah. Uh, again, acknowledging and understanding and love that some of you disagree with the yeah. method of that peaceful display or when that peaceful display happens during the national anthem, I understand that. What I don't understand, and I'll agree with Brian, is how as Christians we cannot take the opportunity to dive deeper into yes. why Colin Kaepernick, WNBA, the NBA, the NHL, Major League Baseball has drawn attention to these issues and we have not as Christians. Mm -hmm. That yeah. troubles me. Yeah. It troubles me in a way that I have trouble talking to my boys sometimes about it because at the end of the day, we always say we are Christian black men, always. In that order. In that order, Christian black men. So faith means something to us. And I call upon my white brothers and sisters for it to mean something to you. Mm -hmm. I know it does because you're sitting here still listening to us talk about this. So take the opportunity to educate yeah. yourself. It is, so, it is so important. Disagree, please, yeah. but disagree together yeah. and understand yeah. it. So Ralph, I'm a Bills fan. You know what the Bills are good at? What are they good at? Losing Super Bowls. <laughs> yes. But I actually think if we go back, uh, they, 
they embodied this idea of forbearance in a very public way mm. right after all this dust up. So oh, I, re I remember this. It, I was, remember this. it was a game that was televised here in Pittsburgh. It wasn't a national game, but I actually got to watch it. And I was curious to see what would happen. Yeah. Um, one of the things is, is the head coach of the Bills, Sh Sean McDermott, had trying, has been talking a lot ever since he became the coach about building culture and building community and like one team and one Buffalo and all this stuff. I was really curious to see what they would do. So on the day of the game, um, there was a line of players who, who knelt in the front row. Then there was a line of players who stood in the back row. Yet what was interesting is that they all linked arms. Mm -hmm. Front row kneelers, back row standers, mm -hmm. all linked arms. Mm -hmm. So the game ends, they win by the way. Um, but the first question to Sean McDermott is, what kind of division has this kneeling caused in your locker room? And he said, none. He said, we are yeah. one team. Yeah. He said, we're one team. Now, there is undoubtedly guys in the Bills yeah. locker room who passionately disagree mm -hmm. with their teammates' decision to kneel during the anthem. Yep. And there are guys who are kneeling, who think, if you are not kneeling, you do not understand what we're yeah. dealing with. Yeah. And yet, in forbearance, mm -hmm. they decided to disagree, right? And this is what people mean. Like, they'll use the phrase at the end of a protracted online debate, well, we're just going to have to agree to disagree, right? There's a Christian word for that. It's this idea of forbearance. Yes. Which yes. means I will disagree I, I really with like you. That. I really like that. And I will yeah. respect you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I will respect you. It's not enough as a Christian to just agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. To be a Christian, to be in community, is to agree to disagree and to forbear with respect. Yes. Right? Yes. And if there's one thing that we need, and I am as guilty of this as anybody, so am I. right? Because I am a very difficult person to disagree with. I'm very difficult to get along with if you disagree with me. I understand all those things. But this idea of forbearing, of saying, I need to understand why, right? I, I, I don't agree with people who are trying to shame Kaepernick, yeah. but I have a Christian responsibility to try and understand why they don't agree with Kaepernick. Yeah. So, my last word here, and I'll let you close, is like, like, please learn to look beyond the methods to the reasons yeah. as your act of forbearance yeah. to people. Yeah, thank you for that, brother. And I, and I will close with, with saying this. I was fortunate enough to um, uh, preach live at, at a church yesterday. And the, uh, during um, adult education, there, there was an obvious division between um, viewpoints, uh, between one or two members that were, mm -hmm. that were present during adult education. And I, this, this is something that I have heard and seen, but I'm never, I'm always, it, it always lightens my heart and I love to, to hear it in, the, in these spaces, is once we've, once we've started to end our conversation, whatever, whatever topic, uh, we were talking about in, in, in the different viewpoints where have been expressed to the person because I was a newcomer, because I was something that was normally not present there. All of them said to each other out loud, I love you. Uh, I don't really agree with a lot of the things that you said here, uh, and I know you don't agree with me, but I love you and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be stretched in my faith mm -hmm. so that I, so I, I become closer to Christ. Uh, which is where we all should be. So I, I'm going to close by saying this. I hope you have the opportunity to be stretched in a way mm -hmm. that brings you closer in relationship to Christ. And then by doing so, brings you closer in loving each and every person in the way that we're called to in Scripture. I appreciate you, brother. You too. Thank, Thank you for you. your time. All right. All right.